About a year ago I made a very simple round shield out of plywood. It turned out kind of ugly and I decided to do another shield. And uh, so this one was available for destruction. And um, yeah, destruction is always fun, isn't it? So I decided to test a variety of weapons on it. First a basket hilt broadsword. As you can see it didn't cut very deeply into the shield on the first attempt. Um, the plywood seems to be a little tougher than a planked shield. And uh, it made it very difficult to get the blade out, at least when trying to wiggle it back and forth. The second cut was a lot deeper, so that did quite a bit more damage. And again, <laughs> pretty tricky to actually get it out. You hear all the splintering noise. Then with a katana, this is a co-katana, which is a shorter version. As you can see, it didn't cut any further than the broadsword. And I also noticed that it was even more difficult to remove it from the shield, probably because of the blade thickness. And the subsequent cuts were a lot worse. It seems to me that the co-katana is just not very good for this kind of hard cutting. It just doesn't have the length and mass to really do substantial damage. So as you see, it mostly just glanced off, didn't do much damage at all. On to the next one, full length katana. First cut didn't do much either, and uh, apparently I partially struck a nail on that one, which did some edge damage, as you can see right here. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't quite happy with that. There you can see where it made contact with the nail. And, uh, yeah, again, not a very deep cut. This one was a little better, but, um, yeah. It didn't penetrate all that far. And this here was the best cut out of those. It went pretty far. So that is certainly remarkable damage. And here you can see why it cut more deeply into the shield on this attempt. It was along the grain. It is a lot easier when cutting in the direction of the grain as opposed to perpendicular to it. And I mixed it up with all of the blades. I cut both in the direction and against the grain. And here's one of the major issues when dealing with a shield. The blade is really solidly stuck and the user can manipulate it at this point onto a one-handed axe. Unsurprisingly, it does penetrate the shield, even though Again, this doesn't disable it by any means. In general, attacks to the front face of the shield are far less effective than to the rim. Although, of course, they have the advantage that the weapon doesn't get stuck. Over time, continuous attacks would certainly destroy the shield. The spike on this axe is very effective at penetrating it. Punches a hole clean it. Well, not very clean, but it sure punches holes into it with ease. Here, the two-handed axe is um, not very effective at cutting into the shield, uh, mainly because of the thickness of the blade. It is relatively easy to remove, though. And again, attacks to the face of the shield do very little, at least with uh, these types of weapons. Uh, it actually did less than I expected with an axe like this. But um, yeah, again, over time, this would definitely batter the shield. Uh, thrusting into it really didn't do much at first, but uh, when I changed the grip I had more luck, as you'll see in a moment. And there we go, that penetrated the shield all the way. Not really major damage, but it achieved something. Thrusting with a sword against the front of the shield does pretty much nothing. Uh, very, very minor damage. Especially with a sword like this that is pretty flexible, you're really not gonna accomplish much there. And now the Warhammer. Of course, this has quite the impact, literally. Uh, the spike penetrates very easily all the way, and it's also quite easy to remove because of the shape. And onto the two-handed Kriegsmesser. It had quite a bit more power. It's also pretty easy to remove. Yeah, you can see it kind of cuts out wedges out of the shield. This blade really had no problem biting into the shield. This, I think, is the deepest cut. It went quite far. 
Definitely did a lot of damage to the shield, as you can tell. But even with such an excellent cutting blade, it's still quite a lot of work to do significant damage to the shield. It does hold up quite well. And I learned that pulling the blade straight out is the easiest way to get it out. Uh, onto the Warhammer. Of course, it has quite a bit of impact, literally. And uh, this is a pretty good way to destroy a shield. Of course, it, during that time, the Viking Age, they wouldn't have had Warhammers, but yeah, still interesting. And you can also see that the spike doesn't get stuck at all. It's because it's uh, basically a triangular cross-section. You can see here a lot of damage. Notice that at this point, the handle has separated on one side from the shield. And from this point on, it went uh, downhill rapidly for the shield. And, uh, Caravant is pretty amusing, as you can tell. Uh, from here on out, it became a lot easier to damage the shield. I was quite surprised to see exactly how much strength the center grip really gives it. That made quite a huge difference. So basically, as soon as one of the sides separate, or if the center grip breaks, from then on the shield loses a lot of its stability. And you can see the axe just chews it up really quickly. So this is just shield massacre at that point. And for the two-handed axe to finish it off seemed appropriate. It made pretty short work of it. <laughs> you can see there it broke almost entirely in half. Just one more strike and there we go. And that's the end of that. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, random act of destruction. <laughs> Again, this is not representative because it is plywood. It seems to me that this is a little tougher, although not too far off. And the canvas cover made quite a bit of a difference. It made it a lot sturdier. Okay, so that's it, and thanks for watching.